How many people are here? How many people have logged in so far? Six of them. Seven, seven, Maharaj. Seven. Let's, well, okay. Will we begin? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Yeah, I could understand because uh, the program is going on in Vrindavan in honor of His Holiness uh, Kadambakanna Swami Maharaj. So a number of devotees may have gone off to Vrindavan to attend there. I think Bhakti Prem Swami was also there. So he may be there today. Anyway, uh, you know, I got I got a message yesterday but I got the message in the evening asking me to give the class yesterday instead of today but the message didn't didn't come in time I was already traveling so I wasn't in in communication So anyway we'll go ahead and the class is being recorded and those devotees who want to hear the recording, they can hear the recording. All right? All right, yes, so, so we heard... Yes, okay, Maharaj. Yes, okay, thank you. So we heard at the end of Chapter 5. Who remembers what happened at the end of Chapter 5? We were hearing from... Who? Well, chapter 4, Sukadeva Goswami was putting questions to Mahar Maharaj Parikshit was putting his questions to Sukadeva Goswami. And then Sukadeva Goswami was going, to, he was replying by con telling about a, 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 a meeting which took place between Narada Muni and Lord Brahma. And Narada Muni had put similar questions to Lord Brahma. And so that was the subject matter of the fifth chapter. And the sixth chapter is continuing the same because there were a number of questions which were asked and these questions had not all been answered. But we'll see as we go on that more of these questions are answered in this chapter also. We'll get some answers to some of the questions which had been placed by Maharaj Parikshit and they were again asked by Narada Muni to Lord Brahma. So this chapter 6... <laughs> yeah, if you can mute people. <clears throat> so chapter 6 is entitled Purusha Shukta Confirmed. Purusha Shukta prayers are generally offered by the demigods at the time of the creation. The demigods will recite the Purusha Shukta prayers to the Supreme Lord, Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu. So the prayers, the prayers which they are offered are being confirmed here in this chapter. Uh, if I was just looking through the commentary of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, his commentary on this chapter, and he quotes several times, several places he will quote the Purusha Shukta prayers 
and say that, that, that what is being said here in this sloka is also that mentioned there in the Purusha Shukta. And so, I don't know, are any of you chanting Purusha Shukta? Anybody worshipping Shaligram Shila? If you worship Shaligram Shila, usually they will recite Purusha Shukta prayers. Om Sahasra Sirsha Purusha Sahasra Sahasra That's how it begins like that. I don't know all the prayers myself. I'm not a very active these days in Pujari work, but uh, that's how the Purusha Shukta begins. No, so so shuk, Shukta is it, it, something which is well spoken. Su means well and Kita. Katya, it's uh, uh, the words which are well spoken. And so the word, words which are well spoken in glorification of the Purusha. So the chapter begins, uh, Lord Brahma is continuing to speak to Narada Muni. And we know from the previous chapter what had happened. Uh, Lord Brahma was describing about the universal form how the universal form came into existence. So the first part of this chapter, the several verses, we will hear a description, a, sec a second description of the universal form. We've already heard one description of the universal form. This is another description. And it's quite different. In some ways quite different. Some things are a little similar, but other way, it seems to, certainly seems to be something of a different nature, different description, different ways of describing things. Anyway, Lord Brahma is speaking and he's describing the form of the, the you know, this Virata Rup, the form of the Lord, and how everything there in the creation is there within the universal form. So I, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation on this section of the the, the second canto. We, 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 we've had a PowerPoint for the first five chapters. I've never been able to get round to doing it for these other chapters. But what we will do is just go through the chapter verse by verse as it appears in the Bhagavatam. We'll just take it, go through it and see the different points which are brought up. All right, so maybe we could, you could take turns to read a verse. Someone like to read the first verse? You could read the, just read the translation. You're done in Jai, why don't you read the first verse? Yes, Mother, Hare Krishna. So, Lord Brahma said, the mouth of Virat Purusha, the universal form of the Lord, is the generating center of the vice and the controlling deity of his fire. His skin and six other layers are the generating center of the Vedic hands, and his tongue is the productive center of different foodstuffs and delicacies for offering to the demigods, the forefather and the general mass of people. Thank you. Okay. So you can see the description, how it's uh, quite, <coughs> quite detailed, talking a lot about the different elements, the, the controlling deity is fire, and then you have the, the different Vedic hymns, and then we hear about the different foodstuffs as well, the different foodstuffs and delicacies offered to the demigods and the forefathers and the general mass of people. So Srila Prabhupada elaborates on these different points in the purport here. We want to understand this universal form is material but at the same time it is transcendental.
at the end of the purport Prabhupada writes, the process of liberation is therefore easier through devotional service than by any other methods. For in the Bhagavad Gita 12.5, it is said that one is subjected to various kinds of tribulations if one is impersonally attached. Klesho dikataras tesham avyakta sakta chetasam. So this, 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 this viratarup, this worship of the universal form, it's so attractive for the impersonalists. So therefore Prabhupada's warning us again and again that, you know, the, real, the actual process for self-realization is by devotional service. We don't want to be too much enamored by the universal form. At the same time, we do want to understand some of the different features which are described there. We should be able to describe it to, 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 to some extent. And you can see how everything in the creation is actually included there in some way or other. Right? Somebody could like to read text number two for us, maybe Satchinandan. Sachi Nanda Hari Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, 6.3 Maharaj. 6.2. 6.2. Translation. Yeah. His two nostrils are the generating centers of our breathing and of all other airs. His smelling powers generate the Ashwini Kumara demigods and all kinds of medicinal herbs and his breathing energies produce different kinds of fragrance. Ah, thank you. <laughs> so two nostrils, breathing centers. And the demigods, Ashwini Kumars, are produced also, along with medicinal herbs. Ashwini Kumar said, like Ayurvedic doctors, you know, they can cure diseases. I like that. All right, go ahead. Text number three. Who else can read? His eyes are the generating centers of all kinds of forms and they glitter and illuminate. His eyeballs are like the sun and the heavenly planets. His ears hear from all sides and are Respect, respectacles for all the Vedas and his sense of hearing is the generating center of the sky and all kinds of sound. All right. So here we see the sun. Of course, this generally we think of the sun in that way. That's a quite common one from Brahma Samhita also. It said the sun is like the eye of the Lord. And Brahma Samhita Yak Chakshuresha Savita Sakala Grahanam Raja Samasta Sura Murti Shesha Teja Yashyagnaya Brahmati Sambharata Kala Chakro Govindam Adipursam Tamaham Bajami. So the sun is the eye of the Lord, and mentioned here also the eyeballs are like the sun, and the heavenly planets are also included. And then his ears, receptacles for all the Vedas. So we have to understand the senses are meant, the senses are actually meant for the service of the Lord. And the hearing, proper hearing is meant for hearing scriptures, particularly hearing the Vedas. And then the, the verse goes on to say his sense of hearing is the generating center of the sky and of all kinds of sound. So, <laughs> very interesting the, the, how, how all of these things are included there. Somehow they're all amalgamated there into this universal form.
when Prabhupada discusses how different interpretations are there to different words. Shiva, Jiva Goswami says it means the res reception of the Vedic knowledge. Someone else said it refers to places of pilgrimage. The propounders of Vedic knowledge are also known as the Tirthas. <laughs> so, yeah, a holy place is, is also where the devotees are. So Prabhupada is making that point. The propounders of Vedic knowledge, they're also Tirthas. They're speaking the wisdom. So they are, they are themselves holy places. <laughs> Tirti kurvanti tirtani stantakena stantakena yatavrita. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Yudhisthira described Vidura to be the personification of the holy places. So, in this way, <coughs> goes on. Someone else read text number four? Yes, please. His bodily surface is the feeding ground for the active principles of everything and for all kinds of auspicious opportunities. His skin, like the moving air, is the generating center for all kinds of sense of touch and is the place for performing all kinds of Purport? Purport also? No, you don't need to read the purport. Although it's not a very big one, you can in this case, yeah? The air is the moving agent of all these planets, and as such, the generating centers for proportion to the deserving planet. The sacrifices are in bodily surface and are naturally the origin of all auspicious opportunities. Mm. All right, so we understand the sense of the sense objects like the sense of touch and so on. There's something separate, they're subtle, they're not gross. It's not like just because you have skin, so you must have a sense of touch. Of course, the dead person also has skin, but there's no sense of touch. The sense objects are something subtle, and they're also mentioned there in this form of the universal form. The, it says that the breeding ground for active principles of everything. So everything actually is there coming from the Lord. And remember this Virata Rup, this is simply the expansion of the super soul. And the super soul is just a tiny fragment of Lord Krishna described in the Bhagavad Gita, right? In the end of the 10th chapter, Ekam Shena Stito Jagat, with a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire creation. Lord Krishna is saying, it, after describing all of his vibhutis, Lord Krishna said, but what need is there, O Arjuna, for all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support this entire creation. All right, someone read text number five, Maharaji. The hairs on his body are the cause of all vegetation, particularly of those trees which are required as ingredients for sacrifice. The hairs on, on his head and face are reservoirs for the cloud, and his nails are the breathing ground of electricity, stone, and iron ore. Mm -hmm. All right, very, dis very descriptive. The trees for sacrifice, particularly mentioned ingredients for sacrifice, not necessarily just any trees, but particularly trees which are useful for sacrifice. And then the hair on his body are compared to vegetation. Now, vegetation, often we hear about plants and so on, 
like that, as well as trees. So the hair on his body is like that. Then the hair on his head, and as well as the face, so it could be beard also, they're like the reservoirs for the clouds. And then the large snails, which are dazzling, they're compared to the breeding ground of electricity, as well as other things like stones. All right, coming up to text number six. Text number six, I'll read it. The Lord's arms are the productive fields for the great demigods and other leaders of the living entities who protect the general mass. So one of the questions there in the open book, in the closed book rather, they're asking, why does the Lord have many arms? Right. How did you answer that question, Dananjai? Why does the Lord have many arms? Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, uh, because there are many demigods who perform, who is responsible for different functions. And so the Lord has got many arms who represent the uh, uh, different de demigod to execute his different functions. Uh, and and uh, so these are delega uh, delegations of different duties in the form of uh, demigods. Well, not only demigods, but also mentions other people, mentions like powerful kings and leaders and scholars and great men in society. They're all endowed with some particular power by the grace of the Lord. So they're all manifestations of the arms of the Lord. They have some power, they have some position within the society. So it's not only demigods. In the purport to that text number six, Prabhupada writes, I've marked the section, you can see, the intelligent class of men, therefore, must admit the Lord as the ultimate source of all energy and thus pay tribute to the Lord for his good blessings. So we generally see, for example, scientists that scientists who are philosophical that after some time they will become tired of science and they will enter more into philosophy, they will become more philosophical. People like Einstein and Oppenheimer and so on, they were impressed by the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. Although they were great scientists, but they could understand there was something, the, the, the energy of the Lord was far, far beyond their comprehension. They couldn't begin to understand everything about the Lord and the material nature. It was just so complex and so vast. So Prabhupada is writing about that, that intelligent men, they will admit that the Lord is the ultimate source. People who are mudhas and asses, they won't admit. They'll just say, oh, it's just by chance. But those who have a little brain, who have a good brain, they can understand the source of everything. Going ahead, text number seven. Someone not read yet? Yes? Diksha Mataji can read. The forward steps of the Lord are the shelter for the upper, lower and heavenly planets as well as for all that we need. His lotus feet serve as protection from all kinds of fear. So that's something we like to remember, to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. It will always protect us from all kinds of fear. We're always encouraged to remember His lotus feet. Yeah, can you read the next verse? From the Lord's genitals originate water, semen, generatives, rain, and the procreators. His genitals are the cause of a pleasure that counteracts the distress of begetting. <laughs> so this is an interesting verse. And Prabhupada, of course, Srila Prabhupada was a family man. He had five children. 
And so he he was aware of the the distress of begetting, I think, and you know, having a family of five children. He knew how difficult it can be, certainly. Of course, Prabhupada even had a business, and the business failed. He had sometimes financial problems. He was working hard constantly, trying to develop his business. At the same time, he was cultivating his spiritual life. And so, Prabhupada, in these kind of purports, he sometimes talks about his own experiences of the difficulties and the distress which is there. And we see today, of course, in modern society, how atheistic society, uh, they, they try to avoid the responsibility of begetting children. And they do things like birth control and abortion. These things are so common. It's, um, you sometimes you go to if you go to the hospital you know one of my friends told me his wife had conceived a child and she went to the hospital and there were many other ladies there they were, they were also they'd also conceived but all the other ladies came they all wanted abortions she was the only one who wanted to keep the child and even the doctor was surprised oh 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 you want to deliver oh you want to have a baby because so many other people, they didn't. They just come, they just want to abortion, they do abortion. They even, they would do things like sterilization, they'll get sterilized, so they won't have any children. So this is all demoniac civilization. But in this verse, it is explaining that the Lord actually arranges that there's a certain pleasure there in begetting a child, which encourages the man to actually go on and to accept the responsibility. Mm -hmm. now, I've marked a couple of sections just in the purport, just for, for your attention. I'll read it. He says, for, for, therefore the sex life in the material world should not be encouraged beyond the necessity so Prabhupada is recognizing there's definitely a necessity for begetting children. We do want to see, you know, good children. That's important. We want quality children. And there's a the definite need to have uh, nice children. Family life also, to make family life enjoyable, then it's important to have a child. Without having a child, then family life is a bit like being in the desert, Prabhupada says. But at the same time, it shouldn't be more than, it is, it's not that, it's not that sex life is encouraged just for pleasure. So that's Prabhupada's point. And then later on, the degraded form of family restriction by use of contraceptives, etc., is the grossest type of material contamination. So that's not difficult to understand. Certainly as devotees, we can appreciate that. Actually, we like children, and it's actually nice to have children. It's just unfortunate that it seems that at the present time, uh, fertility rates are quite low. Of course, there are a lot of, they do try to help people to have children and so on. And they do things like, you know, they have this, the sperm bank and so on, and they in implant the, the sperm into the womb of the woman so that she can have a child. And people go through a lot just to have a child. So not everyone is demonic. But the problem is, we see uh, people often wait until they're too old. You're supposed to have children when you're young. It's not that you, when you're old you should think about having children. <laughs> you know, 40-year-old people want to have a child. Very difficult, not really possible. But, you know, when you're 20, young, Ayurvedic, say, under... 26 and under is the time to have children. Once you get older, 
then it's not so easy, not encouraged, not good for the body and much more difficult. So that's some points. All right, let's hear text number nine. Yes? Who can read for us? O Narada, O Narada, O Narada, the evacuating outlet of the universal form of the Lord is the abode of the controlling deity of death, Mitra, and the evacuating hole and the rectum of the Lord is a place of envy, misfortune, death, hell, etc. <laughs> okay, not very pleasant things to discuss here. Right? But everything is there within the universal form. So you can see these nasty things like envy and death and misfortune and hell. They're the backside of the Lord. And Pra well, Prabhupada was on the flight one time. He was in the USA actually. And the pilot actually saw Prabhupada in the plane and he came and spoke to Prabhupada. And what he, the pilot, Prabhupada said the pilot was very intelligent and he was asking Prabhupada, he said that, you know, since there is God, he said, why is there evil in the world when there's a God? And so Prabhupada explained that evil is the backside of the Lord. And here you can see also in this description of the universal form that the backside of the Lord is compared to all the nasty things, envy and hell and death and misfortune, it's all the back. All right. And that continues also in text 10. The back of the Lord is a place for all kinds of frustration and ignorance, as well as for immortality. From his veins flow the great rivers and rivulets, and on his bones are stacked the great mountains. So that, yeah, we generally think, we know that generally, that's the one point with, of the description of the universal form, which is often given, how the veins of the Lord are like the rivers, and the bones are like the mountains of the, on, the, on, the, you know, on the planet. What is interesting here, I'm a bit puzzled, is that immortality, that in, immortality is also there, the back of the Lord. Maharaj, it's immorality. Oh, it's immorality. I've not read it properly. Thank you, Mataji. <laughs> I was thinking, how could it be immortality? <laughs> oh, immorality. So immorality, that's okay. So that's there in the backside of the Lord. Yes, so we would expect that to be there. Oh. <laughs> I was reading. <laughs> uh, very interesting. Okay. Someone read the next verse. Text number 11. Dan and Jai, you can read. Uh, okay, who hasn't somebody not read? Yes? The impersonal feature of the Lord is the abode of great oceans, and his belly is the resting place or the materially annihilated living entities. His heart is the abode of the subtle material bodies of living beings. Thus, it is known by the intelligent class of men. Okay. So, the impersonal feature. The Lord is both personal and impersonal. It's not that the Lord is only personal. He's also impersonal. That's also there. But we don't give great importance to the impersonal feature. But we don't deny that the Lord is also... He has both personality and impersonality. Everything is there within the form of the Lord. Prabhupada was interviewed. He was asked, what's right, Dvaita or Advaita philosophy? Prabhupada said they're both right. Let them both chant Hare Krishna. So we have to understand this. We're not, we don't deny the Lord is impersonal, but we are more interested in the personal feature. It's the personality of the Lord which is attractive. 
the impersonal feature is not attractive. All right, go ahead. Also, the consciousness of that great personality is the abode of religious principles, mine, yours, and those of the four bachelors, Sanak, Sanatan, Sanat Kumar, and Sanandan. That consciousness is also the abode of truth and transcendental knowledge. Okay, there's no purport there. Consciousness of that great personality. Who is that great personality? Dhananjay, who is that great personality? Uh, Lord, Lord Krishna Virat, himself. Virat Purusha. Yeah, the Virat, right. Yeah. All right, then there are three verses together. Someone can read? Beginning, beginning from me, Brahma, down to you and Bhava, Shiva, all the great sages who were born before you, the demigods, the demons, the nagas, the human beings, the birds, the beasts, as well as the reptiles, etc., and all phenomenal manifestations of the universes, namely the planets, stars, asteroids, luminaries, lightning, thunder, and the inhabitants of the different planetary systems, namely the Gandharvas, Apsaras, Yakshas, Rakshas, Bhutaganas, Uragas, Pashus, Pitas, Siddhas, Vidyadharas, Charanas, and all other different varieties of living entities, including the birds, beasts, trees, and everything that be, are all covered by the universal form of the Lord at all times, namely past, present, and future, although he is transcendental to all of them, eternally existing in a form not exceeding nine inches. <laughs> So we should understand when it mentions nine inches, it's not actually putting a dimension on the form of the Lord, because the Lord is not actually limited in that sense. It's just to help us understand that the Lord is a person, that he, had, he does have a form, but the nine inches is, is not actually meant for us to think, oh, he's nine inches and we shouldn't be smaller, we shouldn't be bigger. And, but it's to help us understand the fact that he does have a form, and he, but actually his form is infinite. He has a transcendental form. The nine inches is just given to us, just to, uh, for us to accommodate our thinking so we can understand the Lord in that sense. So all the different inhabitants are mentioned, all different planets and the different denizens of higher planets and different varieties. We should understand that they're all, they're all connected to the Lord and they're all there within that universal form. All right, text 17. The sun illuminates both internally and externally by expanding its radiation. Similarly, the Supreme Person of the Godhead, by expanding the, this, this universal form, maintains everything in the creation both internally and externally. So the sun. It's described the glories of the sun, very important. Without the sun, how could we maintain life? We need the sun in order for life, to, the plants to grow. It's so important for heating and warmth. Without the sun, very difficult. The lower regions of the universe, of course, the subterranean, hellish, subterranean heavenly planets, they don't have the sun. And they have to get light from jewels. Although Prabhupada writes, the sunshine may expand all over the universe, but the source of the sunshine, what is the source of the, sun, the sunshine, is actually coming from the Brahma Jyoti. 
And that Brahma Jyoti is coming from the body of Krishna. So ultimately, it, that that sun, the, the light of the sun, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am the light of the sun and the moon. So it, it's all, everything is coming from Krishna. The light of the sun, that, that it, it, it's not ordinary, it's not just some fire which is going on on the sun planet, but it's the light coming from the body of the Supreme Lord in the form of the Brahma Jyoti, which enters to the sun planet and it's reflected through, around the universe. And that sun chariot, of course, the sun god, is mounting the wheel of time. And it's the sun which reduces the duration of life. With the passage of the sun, our life is reduced. So that sun is related to time. And that time, time is of course Krishna himself. And as described here, the Lord is maintaining everything in the creation. He's maintaining it, but not eternally. It's a material world. You can't maintain everything in the material world eternally. Maintaining for some time. There's creation, maintenance, and then there's destruction. That is the nature of the material world. Okay, okay. Now his text 18, and here is immortality. <laughs> Not immorality, but immortality, right? The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the controller of immortality and fearlessness. And he is transcendental to death and the fruit of actions of the material world. O Narada, O Brahmana, it is therefore difficult to measure the glories of the Supreme Lord. Certainly difficult. Any intelligent person, if we think clearly about the nature of this world, and the more we look at the world with intelligence, we can understand how it's so difficult to understand the glories of that personality, that supreme intelligent person who has created everything. So he's being described here by Lord Brahma that he is the controller of immortality and fearlessness. He can give us eternal life and he can take away our fear. And he is transcendental to death. Of course, he is the Supreme Lord. He's not subject to death. We're, we're subject to death. We die in the material world, but the Lord doesn't die. And he's also transcendental to the fruit of actions of the material world. In other words, he's not under the laws of karma. We are under the laws of karma. We suffer and enjoy the results of our activities but the Lord is transcendental. He's not in any way subject to the, the problems of the material world. He is the creator. He's above the laws, right? Just like Dun and Jai may say to his children, you come home in time at night. If you don't come home at night, I'll, be get, I'll get very angry with you. And his children may say to him, but... You don't come home at night. You don't come home early at night. You're late. Come home. And Dan and Jai will say, well, it's my house. I can do as I like. So the same way the Supreme Lord comes to this world, he can do as he likes. He's under, not under the laws of the state. We're under the laws. But the Lord himself is above, just like the king can do no wrong. You find in the past that where there was a king, a ruler, they, they, would, they could do things. They didn't suffer any reactions. They didn't get punished. They couldn't be punished because they were the rulers. They were the kings. They could do anything they liked. 
and they would do terrible things sometimes, but there could be there would be no punishment on them. And so the the Lord, He can also come to this world and He can perform wonderful activities. He can do as He likes. He can steal the butter if He wants. He can also dance with so many young ladies and he can enjoy his pastimes. He is not under the laws of material nature. How does it apply to us? Well, we should, it said we should follow Lord Ramachandra and worship Krishna, <laughs> right? Follow the example of Lord Ramachandra, be a perfect example like Lord Ramachandra. And at the same time, worship Krishna, because Krishna is the Supreme Lord. We cannot imitate Him. All right, any questions so far? Any comments? Anyone? No questions? Okay, here's a point here in the purport I've marked here. It is said that those planets in the spiritual sky which comprise the 75% expansion of the internal potency of the Lord are far, far greater than those planets in the total universes composed of the external potency of the Lord. Well, we'll come to that later. That's an important part of this chapter. We're going to hear about the Tripad Vibhuti and the Ekapad Vibhuti. This is, a, and there's an important description here in this chapter, and we need to look at that closely and understand it. it's one of the main sections of this chapter. All right, text number, where are we? Text number 19, is it? Yes, somebody can read 19. Who oh, is not read yet? Okay, back to you, Dan and Jai Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. So, uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead is to be known as the Supreme Reservoir of all material opulence, opulences by the one fourth of his energy in which all the living entities exist. Deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from the anxieties of old age and disease exist in the kingdom of God, which is beyond the three higher planetary systems and beyond the material covering. All right, so this is an exercise for you. I want you to do it. How many people have we got now in the class? 16, Maharaj. How many? 16, 17 including you, Maharaj. Oh, 16, 17, all right. So we'll have four groups, four groups of four, one group of five. And I want you to, disc I want you to compare and put, list the different points about the Tripad Vibhuti and the Ekapad Vibhuti, the three-fourths and the one-fourths. I want to know what, how, what, what can you find out about them? How can we describe them? What comparisons are there? I want to know any, anything you can come up with, write it down, and we want to hear what points you've got about the, the three-fourths, meaning, of course, the spiritual world, and the one-fourth, meaning the material world. How can you compare them? What are the different qualities? Do they have anything in common? All right, we'll give you, you can take a break for five minutes also, and you can have five minutes. So, so now it, I've got the time is like 5.50, so we'll meet back at six o'clock, 10 minutes from now, right? Five minutes to do this and five minutes break. Is it clear? Make, make four groups. Who's going to break the groups? Anyone? Who knows how to do it? Maharaj Sachinandan Hari Prabhu is the co-host. Oh, okay. As a host. 
what happened to Dinana? Anyway, Sa Sachinandan Hari Prabhu, can you do this? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. How many groups we require? Four groups. Okay. The groups are done. Okay. So break everyone into group. Done, bro. Done, Maharaj. Diksha, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Who else is here? Only you and I. We should be should be four or four or five in the group, isn't it? They must be joining Maharaj. Huh? They must be joining. They're coming out. Oh, they're coming, are they? Okay. So you make a note. The material. The one fourth that is the Maya Sakti. The one fourth is the Maya Sakti, and the three fourths is the Chit Sakti. And the 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 one the one fourth that is the rebellious souls. Those are the rebellious souls, not surrendered. And, and the three fourth, those are the surrendered souls. How does it compare to the spiritual world? They have taken shelter of the Lord. So, Mahatma Nastu Mamparta Daivim Prakriti Mashracha. They are under the protection of the divine energy. They are under the Daivi Prakriti. But those who are in the material world, Mama Maya Duratiya. Huh? Yes, Maharaj. And Maharaj Prabhupada writes in the purport that all living entities are eligible to relish such consciousness of existence, knowledge and bliss very minutely in the liberated stage, whereas in the conditioned stage of material existence, they can hardly appreciate what is factual, existential, cognizable and pure happiness of life. So this is also a contrast of uh, what, what a person feels when he is liberated Satchidanan and when he's not, he uh, does not appreciate factual, existential, cognizable and pure happiness of life. So when he's not, when he's in the material world, he's just suffering the miseries of the material nature. Maharaj. Right? Yes, Maharaj. He's suffering and in that other, other one, he's just uh, Having such a, he's such in such a dhanam. Hare Krishna, Sachinandan, Hare Prabhu. 
हरे कृष्णा We are only three in this group, Prabhu. Maharaj also proper mentions in the purport that the liberated souls exist in far great, uh, like Santini, Samvit, and Aladini energies of the Lord in the matter of deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from old age and disease. So liberated souls can experience these uh, these uh, energies like sandini, samvita, and aladini. They can fear. They can feel deathlessness, fearlessness because of taking shelter of the Lord. I'm sorry, I'm not getting this point. Maharaj Robert writes that uh, Robert writes in the purport, and I'm able to correlate this that. Uh, one who has taken shelter of the Lord, he feels uh, he uh, does not fear death. Doesn't fear death. Uh huh. He is free from old age and disease. So we could say we could say we can say that in the material world, material world is the place of birth and death, but the the tripad vibhuti, it's all. Immortality. There is, there's no death. There's no old age. There's no disease. The miseries are only there in the material, in the ekapad vibhut. Yes, Maharaj. Tap trayon mulanam. Tap It is like it will be free if uh, we take shelter of the Lord. So in three fourth, we are free from that. Topaz writes in the purport. Yes. Topaz writes in the purport that in the three low planetary systems, can one experience the status of immortality, full knowledge, and full bliss? In three low, three fourth of the Chit Shakti put, uh, in the three fourth of the region of where three low planetary system only, one can experience the status of immortality, full knowledge, and full bliss. The point which we discussed. Before the same is repeated in the purport, Maharaj. The second time it is repeated in the purport. Say it again. What's the point? Maharaj, uh, in three low planetary systems, one can experience a status of immortality, full knowledge, and full bliss. Okay, full knowledge and bliss as well as immortality. Yeah. Yes. Material life is just the opposite, right? Yes, Maharaj. And Prabhupada mentions that the upper three planetary systems are Satvic planets because they provide facilities for long duration of life and relative freedom from old age and disease as well as same, uh, Maharaj, two, two times the same point is repeated in the purpose. Oh. Maharaj, in fact, three times. Prabhupada repeats it three. Every time Prabhupada is repeating in the first paragraph, second paragraph. So Prabhupada repeats it twice and then thrice. In the last line, Prabhupada concludes by this that there may be a comparative extension of life, expansion of knowledge in a sense of full bliss, but factual deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from old age, disease, etc. are possible only beyond the material spheres of the coverings of the material sky. Okay. The fearing, the fearing nature is there in the material world. In the spiritual sky, there's no fear. Yes, my having taken shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. Yes. Well, it's Vaikuntha. Should it means no anxiety, right? Yes, my So, should be. Uh,
Maharaj, in the previous paper, Prabhupada mentions that in the kingdom of God, no one has to endeavor for happiness. So, oh. uh, happiness is the nature of the spirit. Ah, wonderful. Yeah. Anand Mayo Abhyasa. The spirit is by nature full of happiness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very nice point. Yeah. You don't have to endeavor for happiness. Everyone's endeavoring here, trying to get happiness. We're trying. We're trying for happiness. We don't know what is real happiness. But in the spiritual world, happiness is the nature of the soul. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I think you got some good points there. Eh? Very nice. Yes. No. Okay, I think the time is up. Sachinandan Prabhu, is he there? No, Maharaj. <laughs> We have to leave the group and then we'll be in the back to the same group. Right. He has to close the groups and get everyone back. Yes, Maharaj, if you leave this, uh, the icon which shows leave, if you leave this, the group will, you'll be back to the normal group. Sorry? Maharaj, there is a button which shows leave, L-E-A-V-E, -E, leave. So oh. when you click that button, you will join back to the original group. Oh, okay. Yeah, but he should do it. He's supposed to close the groups. Oh, here he comes. Yes. Sachinanda Prabhu. Sachinanda okay. Hari Prabhu. Yes, yes, Maharaj. I think we have to close the groups now, Prabhu. Okay, I'm closing it. Neelima, nice of you to join us. <laughs> I'll take a break of 10 minutes and I'll be back. <laughs> Recording in progress. Okay, Hare Krishna. Welcome back everyone. Were you able to have a, some kind of discussion? I hope so. Let me hear. Maybe. Bhakti Devi, and was it Noida Damodara Bhakti Devi Dasi? Yes, Maharaj Ji? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please yeah. accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. Did you have a meeting where you were discussing this? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I Would, was there. Would you like to tell us what you discussed, what points you came up with? Just uh, we discussed about Ekpad Vibhuti and Tripad Vibhuti. In Ekpad, uh, everything is temporary, and in Tripad, it is all permanent. And if we talk about the uh, forgetfulness of the soul, in Ekpad, all the entities are in forgetful state. They forget the real relationship with the Lord, Supreme Personality of Godhead. But in Tripath, there is the intense feeling they never forget about their real relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, about the number of souls that is limited in eight path, it is only one fourth. And in three path, it is almost three fourths of the total. And 
in ek pad all the living entities <coughs> are have four defects and in three pad they don't have these kind of defects and uh, it is a word also uh, like uh, for ek pad uh, the souls are almost brahmedis they get indulged themselves in this true material world and in a uh, ek pad uh this uh, the about sachitanand uh, uh condition that is totally present in three pad and about birth and death it is as i said it is temporary yeah. there is birth <laughs> death disease old age but in uh, three pad it is nothing like that it is all permanent mm. yeah the very soul. good yes you got more points uh about uh, inclination uh this much good mark means very nice and yeah nice you came up with some nice points it's good to hear that the 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 souls in material world where the conditioned souls so we have four defects but in the spiritual world all the souls are perfect souls they're free of the defects that's nice point good now right thank you so much and what who who, who is there someone from another group could offer what about rati prada mati ji Are Krishna Maharaj we are from the same group Maharaj. Oh you were in the same group right? okay <clears throat> yes. All right so who We have uh, two more points can I say Yeah two please points. yeah There is um, there is no anxiety or fear uh, in Tripad Vibhuti but uh -huh. uh, we are all anxious in Ekpad Vibhuti and uh, it is um, Tripad Vibhuti self illuminated whereas Ekpad Vibhuti requires sun moon electricity like that Oh ah, yes right good Thank you. Very nice. Okay. And Dan and Jai Prabhu, were you, I hope you weren't in the same group, were you? No, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Group three, and we discussed mainly about the five different points that uh, uh, this three path it may made of this uh, internal energy of the Lord that is Sandini, Sambit, Aladni, while. The, uh this one path it is controlled by the three mode that is uh, 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 goodness passions and ignorance uh, uh, then uh, in in three path uh, uh, it it's uh, eternity because it is sachidanand while in, in uh, one path which is temporary and which is made of this uh, 23 elements Uh, this the three path is eternal while this one path it undergoes this annihilations and there also the uh, in three path there are uh, innumerable jivas while one path there are limited and they go undergo this birth uh, death uh, old age and disease those tribulations are not there uh, then uh, three uh, this uh, Uh, this uh, uh, this three path uh, which is again as mother ji has mentioned the illuminated by the uh, external effulgence of the lord that is brahm jyoti while this one path is indirectly illuminated uh, uh, through the sun and moon uh, uh, then also we discussed what that this uh, Uh, three uh, this one part it is divided into the three loka that is swarga mat uh, mrita and patala and uh, and uh, and that is the sandini energy of, of the lord while uh, uh, this three part uh, uh, there the vaikuntha loka is there where everything is eternal uh, and uh, it, 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 so all this uh, uh, this uh, pleasure and sorrow uh, the suffering it is there only on this one path while the uh, the three path it is uh, they are they are all eternally blissful and full of knowledge so these are all the points
otherwise we discuss tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yes. Good. Okay. Who was in your group? In our group, this uh, uh, Chitrahari, Das Prabhuji was there, Kanak Prabhuji was there, and uh, Nilima Mataji was there. Oh, Nilima was there. She came in our group. Chaitanya Hari Prabhu, were you in that group? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Hmm. So, what about Vishnu Kanta Dasi? Were you in that group? Uh, Maharaj, actually, uh, I am part of Vishnu Kanta Mataji's group. So, uh, so some of the extra points, is, although Mataji and Prabhuji has uh, uh, discussed uh, almost all the points, but uh, from the 20th verse, we can understand that the activities of the people in the Ek path means material world, they are called the Shasana, means activities who, where people want to lord it over the material nature. And uh, in the Tripa Vibhuti, it is a Anashane, means which are the devotional activities. Ah, yes, good. <laughs> and also in the Ek, ek, ek Pad, uh, uh, there is a new science of of avidya and in the tripa vibhuti it is a vidya it's a factual knowledge oh factual knowledge okay good and point. Uh, in terms of the from the 20th verse Prabhupada says <clears throat> the nature of the people in the ek part is griha medhi and abrut Brataha means who, who don't follow celibacy strictly but in the three part it is a uh, people are gruhastha and they follow the uh prataha means who are very strict in celibacy vow and uh, they are not mean for the birth and death means apradnyam that's what uh, the word used meaning apradnyam is uh, people who who are not meant to take birth. That's what that's how Prabhupada has translated this word. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you, Prabhu. Very nice. Thank you. Some interest new points there. Now uh Diksha Mataji, you want to quickly go through some of the points we came up with? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. You only told many points. I will just like to uh, just uh, mention the points. One fourth, Maharaj mentioned that one fourth is Maya Shakti and three fourth is Chitta Shakti. And in Maya Shakti, mostly there are rebellious souls. And in uh, Chitta Shakti, three fourth, three part, it surrendered souls are there. And uh, I wanted to mention one point proper. Prabhupada mentions that there is no, one does not have to endeavor for happiness. In the three path tantric system, three path vibhuti, uh, one, one doesn't have to endeavor for happiness in Vaikuntha Lokas, but in, uh, in uh, Ek path vibhuti, one has to uh, endeavor for all the happiness like we are all, like we all do, like we uh, crave for material things. So we look for happiness in the suffering society. So in three path, it's all suffering, and in uh, three path, it's all uh, happiness, Satchidanan, and in ek, ek path, it's uh, all the sufferings which one goes through. I think other points were covered, Maharaj. Okay. Anybody else like to add anything which we've not covered so far? No? Okay. Very good. Let's see. We'll go back to our text here. We're up to text 19. Uh, we can go up to 20. We're yeah, going on to text number 20, which Prabhu was quoting some of the points from text 20. Okay, again. The spiritual world, which consists of three-fourths of the Lord's energy, is situated beyond the material world, and it is especially meant for those 
who will never be reborn. Others who are attached to family life and who do not strictly follow celibacy vows must live within the three material worlds. All right, so it's mentioned particularly uh, vows. You make vows, we should keep them. We make vows to chant Hare Krishna. It's important for us to do that. And similarly, we must follow the stri very strictly the principles. And Prabhupada writes the purport, the highest benefit that can be awarded to a human being is to train him in 